Hello, and welcome to Yes, You Can Have a Joyful School. I am Dr. Donna Marie Cozine, and I am delighted to be with you today to share my message about why it's so important to have joyful schools, but also how we as leaders can ensure that we have joyful schools. Let me start by sharing my screen with you, and we are going to go ahead and get started. So, okay, here we are in 2021 and teaching has become one of the toughest jobs. How did we get here? Well, for years, we've had the challenges of ever-changing standards, increased class sizes, decreased resources in our classrooms, increased accountability with longer standardized assessments, and then COVID came along. We had to go virtual. We had to create a virtual program overnight. We needed to change the way that we did things, the way that we taught children, change the way that we train our teachers, create new methods of assessment and instruction, and maintain the high standards that we set for positive school cultures. Like each and every one of you, I worked in a school during the COVID pandemic. So here we are over a year post the onset of COVID and we really aren't past COVID. The worldwide pandemic has impacted every industry in the world. First, responder, first responders were pushed to their limits, entire industries shut down for months. The lights actually went out on Broadway. Many of you might agree with me, however, that educators were impacted more than most. First, we were sent home to teach um, it virtually, in our homes where we had our families with us because the whole world was shut down. Then we were sent back to school in some fashion, whether it was fully remote, that was after the summer, uh, fully remote or hybrid or a combination of both or fully in person. But even then, even if it was fully in person, it was totally different with masking, social distancing, being unable to meet in small groups, smile at kids, give them pats on the back like we were used to. Finally, we left for summer vacation with high hopes things would return back to normal in the fall. Alas, that didn't happen. We came back this fall and it's obvious we are not going back to normal anytime soon. As educators though, we stepped up and stepped out. Schools became the lifeline for children and their families. I am so proud of what we did as educators, what we were able to accomplish. From nothing, we created amazing programs that were engaging and met the kids where they were. We can do anything. But we actually have a big problem in education. We are quitting the field. As a profession, we were already having this issue before the pandemic. So it's going to be interesting when the statistics come out about what happened to our industry after the pandemic. But before the pandemic, 45% of new teachers, those are teachers who taught for one to three years, left the profession. 17% of principals do not serve the same school two years in a row. And 45% of superintendents don't last more than three years. Now, we know what happens when we have a revolving door of teachers and leaders. There's insecurity. There's developing new culture. There is distrust. Who is this person? How do I get to know them? So having this rotating door is not good. But I have even a more staggering statistic to share with you today. In the largest districts in this country with the highest level of poverty, 71% of superintendents don't last more than three years. So the students who need the best in education are not getting it because we have this revolving door of leadership. Now that was before the COVID pandemic. So let's add the COVID pandemic when teachers and educational leaders were put to the test where their needs and the needs unfortunately of their families um, came second to the needs of their students. And there was a drastic consequence to that. Many of us lost our joie de vivre, 
our joy for our jobs, and some even burned out. Being an educator is not an easy choice. The old adage, those who can do and those who can't teach, is not only completely inaccurate, but I find it extremely insulting. It actually should read, those who can't do and those who do amazing things with limited resources teach. When I graduated from Pace University um, with my degree in education, we all received a certificate from the, the Dean of the School of Education and it reads, congratulations on choosing a career that affects eternity. Congratulations on choosing a career that affects eternity. That hangs in my office and reminds me every day how important our work is. So I wanna remind you and thank you for choosing a career that affects eternity. See, I taught as a choice and I know many of you did. And I believe we can bring joy back to teaching and continue to affect eternity in really amazing ways. I'm a little behind in my slides, I apologize. So I am the founder and former CEO of Renaissance Academy Charter School of the Arts, a school that was called Joyful. It was described as a joyful place to learn. As a matter of fact, visitor after visitor remark that it just feels different when you walk through the doors into that building. When the pandemic hit, like every other school in the world, we had to pivot everything. And I am proud to say that children left on a Friday with all intentions of coming back to school on Monday. And when our governor shut our school down Sunday, shut all the schools in New York down, we were able to provide a virtual program at 8.30 a.m. Not one single moment of instruction was lost. What's more, we were able to maintain our joyful connections to our community, and we were able to continue to nurture our joyful school culture for which we were known. Sadly, that wasn't the case for all schools. I am here to tell you that it is possible to get the joy you felt as an educator back. We can do this. In the middle of the pandemic, I took the time to dig deep and figure it out, to tackle what makes joyful schools and to just compile it. I wrote and published my second book, Happy Teachers, Joyful Students, Engaged Parents, A Plan for Building a School Community That Works. I wrote the steps out, and I created the school joy method because we have to bring joy back. We cannot afford to lose it. Do you remember the first time you rode your bike by yourself? Okay, I was probably older than most of you, not so great in the um, occupational therapy areas or whatever they're called, finding gross motor skills, but I never did look my no hands, but I remember that feeling. Do you remember that feeling of pure exhilaration and joy? It's possible to have that feeling in your life again. That's what we can't afford to lose. We have to build joyful schools, brick by brick if we have to. It doesn't have to be hard. The blueprint for joyful schools actually has three parts. The first part is the foundation, and that's your mindset. If you expect the joy and you focus on the joy, you have the right mindset to create a joyful school. Henri J.M. Nguyen said, joy does not simply happen to us. We have to choose joy and keep choosing it every day. And I don't know if you've noticed if you do some shopping and you go to places like TJ Maxx or Big Lots or all those home stores, I always see things that say, choose joy, or I choose joy. It truly is a choice. But the amazing thing about mindset is it is the one area where you can fake it until you make it. It actually works. Research shows if you focus on negative experiences or negative stimuli, you will be negative. So focus on the joy, focus on the joyful mindset to look at everything as an opportunity. An integral part of expecting joy is setting high expectations, setting high expectations for students, 
high expectations for staff, high expectations for instruction, and high expectations for yourself. Expect joy and expect the very best from all you serve. The second part is the supporting structures, the walls, the things we see both inside and outside of the building. We as leaders and educators, we must see the joy. Russell Nelson said the joy we feel has little to do with the circumstances of our lives and everything to do with the focus of our lives. And if you think about that, you look at um, like the St. Jude's commercials, right? Where they show these children who are battling cancer and they're showing good things that are going on in the children's life because of the hospital and the children are smiling and laughing and being loved by their families. They are not focused on the circumstances, they're focusing on the good things that are happening. So when we opened the doors of our school two weeks before, uh, oh, I'm sorry, when we were scheduled to open our door doors, we didn't have a building. And then voila, we found a building. And when we got into the building, we also found out that we were the proud owners of 110 filing cabinets, a lot of desks and chairs, a couple tables. But what we didn't have literally were walls. The school was a school without walls when the schools were built in those open concept schools. So like the gritty school that we were becoming, we literally built walls out of those filing cabinets. We had 55,000 55, square feet of building space with only two usable classrooms. The rest were wide open spaces that we called the hangar because it was like, uh, like you could put an airplane in there. So we built walls physically, but as leaders, we need to see those walls. We need to see the joy. So see your teachers where they are, offer support. One time um, it was report card time and um, a certain teacher did not have his grades in on time. And I thought to myself, man, he doesn't have his grades on time. It's going to slow everything down. And I thought, how can I handle this? And I said, well, you know what? I'm not going to see this as an opportunity um, to be down on him or to scold him. I'm going to see this as an opportunity to give support. And I went to him and I, let's say his name was Jim. And I said, Jim, I noticed that you didn't have your report cards in, your comments in, I need to review them. Everyone else, you know, hit the deadline and you didn't, is something going on? And he said, um, sorry, DMC, I just couldn't get to it or I didn't finish it up. So I said, okay, well, I see that we have two options. So the first option is I'm happy to cover your class for 45 minutes so you can finish your um, comments so we can get the report cards going. Or do you feel you can do it on your prep period? And he was like, oh, DMC, it's, I'll do it on my prep period, no problem, just give me until two o'clock. So I was like, okay, no problem. I offered the support that he needed and that made him feel good. That did not make him feel negative. And that situation, which could have had negative consequences on our relationship or how he felt about things, turned into an, um, an opportunity for me to give him support and grow that joyful culture. The other thing you need to see or with the people that you see are healthy relationships. Support your teachers, challenge your students, engage your parents. Sometimes you do have to go the extra mile to build and grow those healthy relationships. Go into the community, be present in the lives of your students and their families, conduct home visits, support the causes that are important to them. Finally, the last part of, yes, you can have a joyful school, is the roof that is over everything and sheltering everyone from the storm. And that, my friends, is you. You have to be the joy. Since you get more joy, wait, let me backtrack for a second. Eleanor Roosevelt said, since you get more joy out of giving joy to others, you should put a good deal of thought into the happiness that you are able to give. Consistently lead by example. When faced with an issue or with a problem, look at it as an opportunity to rise to the challenge. Funny story about um, my face, and I tell people about this all the time. When I was a principal for the first time, or maybe even when I was an assistant principal, I would walk around the building with like this face. And I wasn't unhappy, I was just pensive. I was always walking around thinking, what am I doing, what's next, yada, yada, yada. And what people would say is, what's the matter with Donna Marie? 
Is she angry? Is she upset? What's going on with Dr. Cozine? And people would say, Dr. Cozine, are you okay? I'd be like, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm just, I'm thinking. What I realized was I was not putting out positive energy. I wasn't putting out joy. And then I wasn't helping create that joyful environment. So joy is contagious. And when we emit it and demonstrate it, people will follow. So now in schools, when I'm working with schools, I warn them about my face. I say, if you see me with a really like pensive face, I'm not angry or upset. I'm just thinking. And I really work on making sure that I, I'm smiling and I'm making eye contact with people. Because as a leader, regardless of what position you're in, People are looking at you and watching you at all times, good, bad, or indifferent, unfortunately. Um, so it is very important to always be the joy. Also, occasions for celebrations are really important. And that's something you can do as leaders in your community, whether you're a teacher, a school leader, um, a department chair, anything, a parent, create occasions for celebrations, shout outs, academic pep rallies, contests, birthdays, and even celebrating accomplishments outside of school. We had a young man who was an amateur boxer. I think it was like he was in the fourth or fifth grade and he won the state title. And he got one of those big gold belts and all of those things and I had heard about it. And um, we highlighted him at school. We went on the announcements and we, we told everybody about it and he had his belt and he was showing his friends and just really being happy and joyful for the accomplishments of others and celebrating everything you can in the school will help bring the joy. See, our schools are not that far gone. They are, some are in disrepair, but they are still standing. We can save the teachers who are there now, and we can build better places for the teachers in the future. Marion Williamson says, joy is something that we choose. Joy is what happens to us when we allow ourselves to recognize how good things really are. Always look and say, hey, things are really good right now. There are often obstacles, but don't think of obstacles as blocks. Think of them as opportunities to be joyful. We can build joyful schools, whether we're building them brand new or we're doing renovations. We don't need to demolish the ones we have. Maybe your school simply needs a new addition. There was a time when I personally had to do my own renovation. And it's story I'm going to tell you here is when I, 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 is about the change in me when I chose to focus on the joy of creating and running Renaissance Academy Charter School of the Arts. People who knew me that first year, they laugh at how I was. They reminisce that I was so pensive all the time, running around like my hair was literally on fire. And I was burning the candle in, at both ends. They, they write, I was. The problem was that I was focusing on the little things and not what caused me to start this amazing school. I was looking at this thing that was going wrong and that thing that was going wrong and that thing that was going wrong. And when I shifted my paradigm back to focusing on this joyful school that I, I promised I would create, it all changed. I became more grounded. I was able to make decisions more quickly. I did not expect, um, I did not overreact to problems. And I truly, truly was able to hear my stakeholders and respond in a way that honored their needs. So the three steps are expect the joy, see the joy, and be the joy. When you leave here today, I have a challenge for you. I want you to do one thing. I want you to expect the joy in whatever happens today. Just one thing. When you're faced with a situation, I want you to imagine that the situation ends in joy. What will that look like? What will that feel like for you? What will that look like for others? This, my friends, is how we start to build joyful schools. Thank you for your time and attention today, but especially for your commitment to recapturing your own joy and that of your school community. Please feel free to reach out to me if you'd like more information on how I help schools become joyful and how I help leaders recapture their joy. Thank you for attending.